Hello, this is the mucosa of the vermiform appendix. We have the crypts here, which are lined by columnar cells, and you can see that they have these goblets. And in between, we have the lamina propria. We're going to zoom in to the lamina propria to look at all these cells here, so that you can familiarize the cells with the morphological appearances of different types of leukocytes or white blood cells. At this increased magnification, you can see a lot of relatively small nuclei and a lot of cells with extremely reddish cytoplasm. So think about what these cells with the red cytoplasm could possibly be. At this magnification, we can see that uh, very strikingly there are these cells with extremely reddish coarse granular cytoplasm. These cells also have a bilobed nucleus here uh, resembling like a pair of glasses and these would be the eosinophils remember they are types of granulocytes which means they have a granular cytoplasm and a lobed nucleus there is another type of cell here with a multi-lobed nucleus and again here and these would be neutrophils neutrophils are your main players in acute inflammation if you recall there are a lot of other cells in the background, such as this cell over here, which does not have cytoplasmic granules, not visible on light microscopy, um, and another such cell here, as well as here. So these cells have relatively round to slightly irregular nuclei and very scant cytoplasm, and these are lymphocytes. Here at higher magnification, we can see that there are a few cells like this, with more cytoplasm, with a very eccentric nucleus that's placed to one side. It's almost touching the, cyto uh, the cell membrane on one side. The cytoplasm is sort of pale purplish, and there is a pale pinkish area here, um, right next to the nucleus, which we call a HOF. So this cell is a plasma cell. There is another plasma cell here. You can't really see the cytoplasm so well, but you can imagine that the chromatin really looks like a clock face because it's sort of radiating from outwards in and this classical pattern is seen in plasma cells. Here you can see another plasma cell here with the purplish cytoplasm, the perinuclear Hof and the clock face chromatin. In this different area there are actually quite a lot of plasma cells. You can see a couple here, another one here, a couple of plasma cells here, here as well as here and uh, a lot of cells in the background are lymphocytes so here are several lymphoid follicles with the paler germinal centers and the darker mental zones and I'm just going to zoom in to show you the different appearances of lymphocytes here we have the germinal center and we have the outer mental zone all of these cells are lymphocytes and you can see that in the germinal center there are larger lymphocytes and in the mental zone the lymphocytes are smaller so here on this lower half is the germinal center and on this upper half is the mental zone and you can recognize the lymphocytes as being quite small with brown to slightly irregular nuclei uh, hardly any cytoplasm at all and no visible cytoplasmic granules and the lymphocytes uh, in the germinal center center are a lot larger and the nuclei tends to be a little bit paler with more prominent nucleoli so back to low power, this is actually a case of acute appendicitis and I'm going to show you the wall of the appendix. Typically in acute appendicitis, the wall is infiltrated by acute inflammatory cells which principally comprise neutrophils. So here is the wall and here is towards the luminal site and we can see already that there are quite a lot of cells here among the pink uh, muscularis propria cells. At this power, we can actually appreciate that many of the cells have multi-lobed nuclei, and we also see occasional bright red spots which are likely to represent eosinophils. And at this power, we can readily appreciate the neutrophils here, which are actually quite numerous, and accompanying scattered eosinophils with the bright red granular cytoplasm. So this is characteristic of acute appendicitis. And these neutrophils originally, of course, came from the bloodstream uh, through the process of margination, adherence, transmigration, and chemotaxis coming into the area of injury so that they can phagocytose uh, the injurious agent such as bacterial organisms. 
The last cell type that I want to show you is the macrophage. So these are derived from monocytes in the blood. When they exit the bloodstream and get into tissues, they are called macrophages. And these cells are often quite large here. There's actually numerous macrophages all over the place here. This happens to be a brain infarct. And they are eating up material which comprises a lot of fatty material, uh, lipid from myelin sheaths. So these are macrophages. They are usually large cells. Uh, you can compare them in size to the red blood cells here in the background. They have low nucleocytoplasmic ratios and abundant cytoplasm. Sometimes the nucleus can be a little bit bean-shaped. Um, that's not so obvious in this particular case, but occasionally you can see an elongated, slightly bean-shaped nucleus and abundant cytoplasm. Here is another example of macrophages in action. This is taken from a lymph node uh, infected with TB, tuberculosis, and what happens is that the macrophages main function again, similar to the neutrophil, is that of phagocytosis. So it tries to eat up dead cells as well as offending organisms, and sometimes when they are not able to get rid of them, they coalesce and form these uh, multinucleated giant cells. You can actually see that uh, some of the nuclei are quite elongated. So this is a multinucleated giant cell composed of uh, macrophages. And if you look around, you can see a lot of collections of individual macrophages here. And when these activated or epithelioid macrophages aggregate together to form a collection, this is known as a granuloma. And this is often seen in chronic inflammation, particularly in some conditions like uh, infections such as tuberculosis.